My name is Justin Ziegler. I am an attorney with the law firm of Jay-Z Helps, an injury law firm in Florida. We serve the entire state of Florida, and today I'm going to be talking about shoulder injuries from car, truck, and other type of accidents. This is an image of your shoulder. You have the upper arm bone. The top of it forms the shoulder. You also have the clavicle and the scalpula. Those three bones make up the shoulder. And yes, the upper humerus is part of the shoulder, although some people will disagree. Now the shoulder consists of many tendons, joints, and muscles, which means even without an accident, you may have shoulder problems. And that's one of the things in the cases that I'm going to talk about are negligence cases where someone else's carelessness, also known as negligence, caused your injury. That's what this talk mainly applies to. Although a lot of the anatomy and the makeup of the, the shoulder and the cause of shoulder injuries applies to whatever accident you're in. If you're in a work accident, workers' compensation claim, or personal injury claim, this claim focuses on personal injury. So even without an injury, an accident, an acute accident to your shoulder, you can still have shoulder issues. So when a new client calls me or someone's injured in an accident and they say, I have this shoulder pain, one of the first things I ask is, did you have shoulder pain before the accident? And the good news is in Florida, you're entitled to get what's called an aggravation of pre-existing injury. So if you have shoulder pain before and it's worsened through the accident, you're entitled to get compensated for it if someone's negligence was the cause of the aggravated shoulder pain, your worsened shoulder pain. Expect the insurance company if you have shoulder pain or an injury or even a tear to argue for the most part in most cases, there's exceptions to everything, but in most cases that your shoulder pain existed before the incident. There's many causes of shoulder pain. Uh, the majority of shoulder problems are caused by a fracture, which is a broken bone. Shoulder pain can also be caused by arthritis by shoulder instability or by tendon inflammation, which is known as tendonitis or bursitis or tear of the tendon. I'm gonna talk about all four of those right now. Now bursitis happens when you use too much of the shoulder and there's inflammation and swelling of the bursa, which are between the rotator cuff and the area of the shoulder blade that, shoulder blade that is called the acromion. This is the human body. This is where the acromion is on the body. Here's a close up of the acromion. As you can see it's on the tip and the head, the person's head would be here. This is also a view from the back. So if you were looking at someone and their head is there and their left arm would be there. So swelling of um, the acromion area is called subacromial bursitis. And it's important to know all these terms because you will see, even if the doctor doesn't use these exact terms with you, you're gonna need your medical records to end up sending to the responsible party, generally their insurance company, and you're gonna to wanna to know what your records say. Also, um, I've already mentioned several different types of causes of uh, shoulder pain and different components of the shoulder. I have articles throughout this website, my website on every one of these, an individual article. This is just on shoulder pain in general and shoulder injuries in general, although I'm gonna talk briefly about the different type of injuries and additional stuff. So I mentioned that bursitis and tendonitis, you can, uh, can cause pain in the shoulder. If you have tendonitis, you should expect the, tendonitis is inflammation of the tendon, you should expect the insurance company, the liable insurance company, to argue that that existed before the accident. That's one of the things that makes these claims harder and when you're evaluating the full value of the case, how much the full value is the total value if there were no issues or problems with your case. One of the things you do is uh, you may have to take a discount for settlement purposes, a reduction in the full value. And if you have tendonitis, you, you, you may need to look at, you know, was, is it pre-existing? Did you have it before the accident? That may cut down some of the value of the claim. Tendonitis can be caused by reaching overhead excessively in the past before the accident. It also can be degenerative, meaning as your body, as you're young, your body generates, a child's body generates, and after you hit a certain point in life, your body begins to degenerate or slowly break down. 
Now, degenerative disease in your shoulder can be caused through age. So one of the things that I think, or many insurance adjusters think when they <clears throat> see someone in their 60s or so is, is the shoulder pain degenerative and is it old? And if so, they may discount the full value of your case to reflect that and offer you less money. Now, tendon tears are one of the common types of injuries that I see in the shoulder. Tendon tears, you're gonna know you have a tendon tear because most likely the doctor will say it. You will, it will generally picked up on an MRI, which is a machine that, that, that um, takes an image of your shoulder. This can be accident related. You can split your tendon and they can come from an accident. What type of accidents? Car accidents, as you, all types of motor vehicle accidents, truck accidents, motorcycle accidents, even a fall. That's the good news if you're making a personal injury case based on your tendon tear. The bad news is that tendon tears may also be before the accident. This is again something when every new client who either calls me after they bear, a doctor tells them they have a tendon tear, or I discover it, it's one, it just, it enters my head as a possible injury that existed before the accident. And if it enters the insurance adjuster's head, who's handled likely many, many cases, yours will not be their first. Maybe more difficult cases. What do I mean by that? Because your tendon may have existed, your tendon tear may have existed before the accident, you have the additional element of your case in proving that your accident caused the tendon tear. You need your doctor to relate the tear. Doctors are very important in personal injury cases. Hopefully, with your doctor telling the truth, <clears throat> he will relate your tear to the accident. Some doctors do a lot of work for insurance companies. And if you're injured during work, for example, and you treat with a, workers, a doctor who's billing your workers' compensation, they are more likely to say the tear was not caused by the accident. It is related because, again, as part of a personal injury case, the tear needs to be related to the accident and someone's negligence, carelessness must have caused your tear in order for you to get compensated. They also needs to be a collectible source of money, which is generally through insurance. In addition to the insurance adjuster arguing that your tear is old, expect the insurance company doctor will likely say the tear is not related to the accident and then it's a battle. The good news is most shoulder tear cases settle, although you may have to file a lawsuit into, in, in, in order to get fair value for your claim. And most cases even settle before the doctors give their testimony. And remember, the insurance company has a right, party's insurance company has a right in every personal injury case to have their doctor review your medical records and examine you. But the only, the, the other side, generally speaking, what's called the third party, the side whose carelessness caused your accident, they only have a right to examine you after you file the, file the lawsuit. You can have a partial tear of your shoulder, of the tendon, or a full tear. Generally speaking, all things equal, full tears are worth more. They result in higher settlements. Shoulder instability happens when your head of the humerus, the upper arm bone, is pushed out of the shoulder socket. That's another injury that hopefully your doctor says is related to the accident, but you should expect the, the uh, insurance adjuster, the insurance company to argue that it was pre-existed, existed before the accident. The insurance company's doctor will likely say that your shoulder instability existed uh, th through using your shoulder excessively, which happens through time or through your job if you're in a career where, where your shoulders, uh, you're using your shoulder excessively. Now, also brings me to uh, the point that if, you, if a child has these, a, a tear or someone who's very young has a tear, you're going to face much less resistance and a much weaker argument, if any, from the insurance company that the tear was caused by the accident. Well, any day of the week, I would prefer representing someone, although I love representing anyone who's injured. It's easier to represent a 22-year-old. By easier, I mean you have a higher likelihood of getting more compensation money if a 22-year-old is claiming a tear as opposed to a 75-year-old claiming a tear. But I do like representing all ages of people, and I've represented 70-year-olds with tears, etc.
Now, pain and suffering is one of the largest, if not the largest component of a shoulder tear case. You're entitled to get money for your pain and suffering. Again, if the other individual or company's carelessness caused your shoulder tear or shoulder injury. The bigger effect it has, the bigger effect the accident has had on your activities of daily living, your inability to go fishing, uh, swimming, etc. Generally speaking, the more money the insurance company will assign to the pain and suffering component of your case. The less effect it's had on your life, the less the insurance adjuster is going to assign to the pain and suffering component of your case. If you have one medical visit at a hospital or doctor, they expect the pain and suffering uh, award to be very small. If you someone's negligence caused your accident and you treat for three years and your treatment is related and um, Expect the pain and suffering component to be much higher. Be sure to let the doctor know all the effects that your shoulder injury is having on your life, okay? The medical records are the Bible in your case. What you tell the doctor will generally be placed into the medical records. Those medical records will then be sent to an insurance company. The insurance adjuster, if they want to help you, you need to help them by giving them medical records so they can write up their evaluation of your case and show that to their supervisor who will ask for documentation. The more activities that the medical records talk about that you're unable to do, and the more activities that you are unable to do due to your shoulder pain, the higher value the pain and suffering component of your case for settlement purposes, and I'm talking about the full value before you start discounting it for negative factors that can affect your case. Many people call and they ask, how much is my, the, what's the settlement value of a shoulder injury or shoulder pain? It's something that every attorney you ever speak with most likely is going to tell you they don't know until they know more facts. In many parts, I've already keep, I've, I keep drilling it into this talk that many parts go into a case <coughs> with someone at fault. If they weren't, your case may be worth zero. But many factors go into it. I mean, shoulders, for example, LeBron James, if he injures his shoulder, he could be out a season and his case could be worth $25 million with loss of endorsements possibly and loss of ability to play. But Joe Smith could, could trip and fall over his own two feet and injure his shoulder and get one medical visit and his case could be worthless. Many factors affect a shoulder injury case. I have another article that talks about close to 90 factors that affect a shoulder case. But for purposes here, I'm just gonna say the amount of property damage in a car accident, you're gonna have a much, you're gonna face much more resistance from an insurance company if you have no damage to your car and you're claiming that your shoulder, that, that your life has been totally turned upside down and you have shoulder pain and the other car has no damage and the other driver says they only tapped you at two miles an hour. It's gonna be much easier to prove a case if you look at the car and it looks like a pancake and it was just totally wrecked and it's the type of vehicle that you drive by on the road or street or highway and you say, whoa, I wonder what happened to that person. I wonder if they died. I wonder if they survived. I wonder how badly they were hurt. Or the type of car or SUV or truck that you pass on the street or highway and you see turned upside down and it sends shivers through your stomach or spine. Another big factor is how soon you complain of the shoulder pain to your doctor. All things equal, if someone complains, if you complain to the paramedic and, and police officer and ambulance the day of the shoulder, the day of the accident, you're gonna have a much easier case than if you get injured in an accident and wait four months to complain about your shoulder pain. Just gonna really quickly go over some of the cases I've handled involving shoulder injuries and pain. This is a very, very small sample size for me. I do not include some of my larger shoulder injury settlements, but I represented a lady who received $30,000 settlement for shoulder pain and other injuries. It was a rear end accident in Orlando, Florida. Um, her shoulder pain was not her biggest injury. She had a meniscus tear that she had surgery on. USAA, who we've dealt with plenty, who's actually an above average insurer, they paid $30,000 to settle the case. I also represented a scooter rider who received $52,000 for shoulder pain. Again, shoulder was not, his shoulder pain was not the biggest injury. His eye injury was the biggest injury. Uh, a man driving a pickup truck hit him while he was on his scooter. He also had lower back pain, neck pain, knee pain. As you can see with the hyperlinks here, I have links to all these articles that I've wrote in about all the other injuries. The crash happened in North Miami Beach. And as you can see from the two accidents, we represent people throughout the, uh, 
the state. And I say that in part because in certain parts of the state, adjusters and juries, generally speaking, award different amounts for your pain and suffering component of the shoulder claim. That's another factor. Again, my article that talks about 87 factors affecting, uh, affecting personal injury cases addresses that. Crawford and Company, who's one of the largest third-party administrators, uh, handle the claim, that claim. A third-party administrator is, is, is an administrator for a company that is self-insured, that, that pays out of their pocket. And Broadspire is the TPA division. In that case, as you may have gleaned, I represented the scooter uh, rider. In other case, I set up for $25,000 for a shoulder uh, labrum tear and other injuries. Um, this gentleman had several injuries. They were mostly likely all aggravations. Unfortunately, the policy limit was 25000 and that was played by USAA. He had uninsured motorist insurance. The other driver, unfortunately, as with I think one out of five drivers in Florida, had no bodily injury liability insurance, so, and he had no assets, no money to pay the case. In other cases,